Hello and welcome, this is David Coombs from ThinScale Technology and during this short video we're going to run through the installation and configuration of ThinKiosk 5.1 including the ThinScale management platform. Before we begin, let's have a quick look at the prerequisites required for installation. The ThinKiosk client is supported on Windows 7 and above and requires .NET Framework 4.5. The new management server is, is IIS based and requires Server 2012 or Windows Server 2016. The management console, which can be installed alongside the management server, but also installed on different machines and has the same prerequisites as the ThinkEOS client. It requires Windows 7 and .NET Framework 4.5 and above. So let's make a start with the installation. We're going to start with the management server itself. Uh, we have a, a test machine here, which is running Windows Server 2016. And we've got the installation media here on our desktop. So as I said, we'll start with the server. The initial install is a, is a simple next, next finish. The installation will configure some additional Windows features re required by IIS. And after the installation is completed, we'll need to run the uh, configuration wizard so we can set up our initial deployment. So during the wizard, uh, the wizard can be used for, for lots of different things, um, changing existing configurations, adding additional servers to existing deployments. But for this, we're going to create be creating a, a brand new deployment. Uh, the new platform has the option of a, a local database as well as a uh, SQL Server. Uh, the, the original release of the, the platform just had SQL Server, but uh, this, this new release with Kiosk 5.1 does all support uh, a local database, which is what we'll be using today. And we need to enter the uh, address that uh, this server is contactable on. Uh, the, the wizard will fill in the details for you based on the name of this machine. So this is actually the URL that you will be typing into the, the management console as, as well as the, the ThinkKios client later on. It's also the address that other um, management servers will use to communicate with this management server should you be adding a second or a third into the deployment. So we need to create the uh, initial password for the uh, local administrator account for our deployment. Uh, just set that for password. Uh, we can obviously change this uh, later on, which we will do. Uh, we have software uh, repository for our uh, installation packages. So when packages are uploaded to the, to the management server, these are stored in this location and, and replicated across all the other management servers in the deployment. We also have a, a temporary file location. This, this is used for, for transfer of those packages as well as storage of, of log files. Um, we default those locations into the, into the associate directories within the, the installation folder, but you can browse and, and stick those on alternative drives or, or other, other locations on the management server should you, should you wish. Uh, we'll enable some logging. Um, error uh, we would recommend for the for the, for a production deployment. Um, you you can make it more verbose and go down to warnings and information, but uh, but typically for production uh, error is 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 more than enough. We'll apply that configuration. Uh, once it's completed, uh, you will get some, some details um, of, of what you need to log in with the management console. So again, the URI that we entered, uh, the, the, the default username, which is administrator, and then the, the password that we entered during the, uh, the, the configuration wizard. And once that's done, uh, the management server is up and running. And the next thing we need to do is install the management console uh, to allow us to connect to that uh, to our new deployment. As I mentioned during the prerequisites, you can install the management console on, on any machine, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to install it here on the, the same machine as the, as the management server. So again, uh, it's a very simple next, next finish installation for the console. Uh, once the installation is complete, we can go ahead and, and launch the, the console directly from the installation wizard. Once the console has launched, you'll be prompted for uh, login details into the management system. So the, the first thing we're going to need is our management URI. This is the uh, address that we uh, noted during the setup of the management server. 
we'll just paste those details in there and then we'll also need the credentials of the uh, administrator accounts that uh, that we that we set up also during the wizard um, you'll notice we do support domain logins as well but that needs configuring uh, after you've initially logged on for that first time so uh, to start with we'll use a, a native login using the administrator account and the password I set up during the uh, the configuration of the management server so we'll click log in and uh, once we're in I'll just expand a few of these nodes and run through them so starting at the bottom here you can see that a 30-day a trial license within kiosk has been installed so the, the trial license will give you access to the to, to all the functionality that, that thin kiosk has uh, has to offer um, we have a primary service. This is the, the, the first uh, it's a new deployment. So this, this server becomes the first primary server. We have uh, our administrator account. So the, the users node here uh, does only um, show you the, the local accounts that, that have been set up. So if you're not going to use domain authentication, you can create additional users that might belong to different roles within the system and give, give to different people within your team access to, to different, different parts of the, uh, the, the management platform. Um, we have a, a default role that's been configured. This is the thin scale administrator's role. This, this role has full access to the system and, and you can't actually change any of those permissions. So you, you can't reduce the, the, the privileges of this, of this role. It, it will have full control over all of the, um, all of the nodes within this console and have, have access to do everything inside the console. If we have a look at the role, um, the local administrator is uh, automatically made a, a member of this role. And again, that can't be changed. You can't remove the, the built-in administrator account from, from the, the thin scale administrator's role. Uh, the one thing we can do, though, is, is edit this role and, and start to add some, some domain accounts. So uh, providing you're using the console on a, on a domain join machine and a, a logged on with a domain account that's got access to the directory, we can, we, we can just browse for. Um, we can just browse for um, accounts within within the directory. So here I've added the um, the domain um, administrator account into the thin scale administrator's role there as well. If we simply disconnect from there um, straight away, we can switch over to using uh, domain login. So the uh, the administrator account that um, that we've just added to our thin scale administrator's role. Uh, once you need to use the the domain password and uh, uh, lab is uh, domain is TST lab. Again, so we've we've logged in. So we're now logged in as the uh, the the domain user uh, because that domain user was a member of the the thin scale administrator's role. Um, again, we'll we'll still have full access to do everything within within the console. Uh, moving further up, uh, you can see the sites here. Um, so this this default site actually a new addition to the to the latest management platform. Uh, sites are uh, what authenticate our ThinkKios devices into the management platform. You can assign uh, usernames and passwords to sites, and sites can be um, can have can have default folders where new devices that are coming into the system will be placed. Um, we've now got a concept of a default site that doesn't actually require any credentials, and we, we've created that site uh, automatically during installation. Uh, this will be the default. Um, option that, that Thin Kiosk will use when you install it and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more later on when we do the, the Thin Kiosk install. You'll also notice that we, we now create a, a default profile. Uh, previous releases of the platform didn't have a default profile. You had to create one from scratch. So um, again, just to get people up and running a bit quicker, we've, we've created this default profile with a, a few default options selected for Thin Kiosk, which automatically gets assigned to our to our default devices folder so as soon as new devices are installed and configured they will they will uh, get added to the default devices folder and automatically pick up the, the default profile so before we make uh, any changes to uh, this default profile we're going to uh, switch over to our um, we've got a, a second windows 10 virtual machine that we're going to install the uh, the thing kiosk client on uh, connected up to the management console and, and just confirm those communications and uh, the, the, the default profile is, is being received. So we just switch over. Um, I have the, the client MSI file here on the desktop. So again, we'll, we'll just double click that. Uh, again, the, the initial part of the MSI is, is, a, is a next, next finish. 
uh, once the uh, installation is completed, we, we now run through a, a small configuration wizard to, to get us up and running. So uh, as with all previous versions within Kiosk, there are um, three options for profile delivery. Um, we're going to be concentrating on the, the management server here, but uh, there is also an option to deliver a, a profile from FTP or, or simply just locally um, if you do just want a, a standalone installation. So we'll select the management server. Um, and again, this is the, the same URL that we've been typing into the, the management console. Um, so it's the address uh, of our uh, management server. Uh, here are, so this is the site connection details I was referring to. So if you don't tick uh, the box here, uh, then Kiosk will connect to that default site. Um, so whatever folder the default site is is assigned to, um, this, this new device will land in. We, we didn't make any changes uh, within the console, so the, the default site I know is configured to the default um, uh, devices folder. So that's where I would expect to see our um, uh, our new device once the installation is completed. If you did, however, create uh, a second site or a, you know additional sites that you have different credentials assigned to because you have maybe different departments or different offices that that are uh, that Think Kiosk is being installed into, and you want those those particular devices to connect via a particular site and and ultimately get added to a a particular folder that will have a particular configuration assigned to it, then then you can do that just here. Um, you simply tick the box and type in the, the username and password that you've assigned when you when you, when you created your site and um, then Kiosk will know to use to use that site for authentication and um, the, the management server will assign it to the to the correct folder. We haven't created any sites. Um, we just have the default site. So I'm just going to leave this uh, un, unticked for now. Uh, we can verify our connection so um, that the wizard will go off to the management server and just verify that it that it can communicate with the with the, with the URL it's been given here. Um, some options here to um, uh, remove the machine from the domain. So um, uh, depending on the, the type of deployment you want, you may have an existing domain join machine, and during the install of the configuration, you want to remove it from the domain. Uh, you, you've got the necessary options here that you can you can do during the installation. Um, this machine is part of a domain, but I'm, I'm actually going to leave it part of a domain. So I'm going to leave these uh, unticked and simply click the uh, apply button. OK, the uh, so the wizard successfully completed. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click finish. And uh, I think Kiosk does require a, a reboot uh, after it's been installed. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now the machine's rebooted. Um, we can log back in. I'm going to log in with my domain administrator account. Okay, and once we're logged in, we can manually launch the uh, the Kiosk client. So as you can see from the title bar here, uh, demo profile, I know that this client has successfully um, uh, contacted the management server and downloaded the, the default profile. Um, you can see it's fairly empty. Um, just have a couple of example applications uh, and some of the, uh, the preferences options uh, available here on, on the ribbon bar. So what we're going to do now, we'll uh, flip back to the, uh, the management uh, console. Uh, we'll have a look at the the device uh, should have added itself to the console. We can have a look at some of the properties of the device, um, and then we'll we'll jump into that default profile, uh, change some of the configuration options, and and turn this uh, this Windows 10 machine into a in, into a thin client device. Okay, so back over at our management console, uh, select the default devices folder. If I just hit F5 there, there we go. We can see that this device has has popped into the console. I can expand and. Bring up some additional details. So we get some basic inventory information, um, product version, time it's about, current user is logged on. Um, some important information around client version, so Citrix Receiver, Horizon, and uh, status of the um, uh, the Windows Security Center. Uh, should you should you have that option enabled? Okay, so I'm going to drop down to the default profile, and uh, we're going to edit this. As I said, we'll, we'll just configure some some additional configurations and, and, and turn that Windows 10 machine into a into a thin client device. 
Okay, so we'll change just a, a few of these options. Uh, first of all, we'll enable Think Kiosk as the shell and we will auto log into Windows. So this, this kind of gives you that true Kiosk experience. Windows Windows won't ask you to log on. The, the first thing the user is going to see is the, is the Think Kiosk UI and um, they'll be prompted for credentials to log into a, a, a Citrix storefront and, and desktop environment that I will I will also configure. So we come down to our applications. Yeah, it's uh, it's an app we're going to enable. Uh, I'm actually going to remove the, um, the the demo applications that that came with this profile. And then if we go into our VDI connectors, I'm going to add a storefront connector. I'll just call that storefront. And then it's uh, URL. So it's uh, addressed to our uh, our storefront server. And the name of our store, which is store 312. Um, I'm not using SSL, so I'm just display some desktop resources and uh, any so any applications, any any desktops that are, that are coming from storefront. Um, and there we go. Let's add that um, TLS support. Uh, it's just some standard options that I select. And during login, um, I'm only going to have users coming from from one domain, so we'll we'll pre-populate that domain and we'll also retain it. Um, uh, for the next user, but uh, because this is a kiosk, I'm, I'm not going to retain the uh, the last logged on username. Okay, that should about do it. I shall save that profile and um, give it some notes and save. So the next thing we need to do, you'll you'll see straight away the um, the active profile and version have gone red. That means that um, the this this device currently isn't running the 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 active profile. We can see that it's actually version revision two because I've I've just saved it. So um, we can either wait for this device to check in and an update depending on the the auto update, or um, what I'm going to do is just do a, a right click and a, a refresh and restart to uh, for that for that device to pick up the profile. Okay, there we go. It's gone black now, so the, I know the device is rebooted. So if we just switch over to that device, um, there we go. We can see our uh, our updated profile. Uh, what I am just going to do is restart that device again, so you can see it reboot and and auto log in. There we go. The uh, device booted up, auto logged in, and the first thing the user sees is the is the, is the thing kiosk UI, um, and they're prompted for their domain credentials. So, if I just log in with my trusty administrator account again, um, we will go off to storefront. We can see there's a there's a desktop been launched, and straight away I'm into my um, my Zen desktop VDI. So I'd just like to thank you for listening and uh, for all information about Thin Kiosk and our management platform, uh, please visit us at uh, www.thinscale.com.